I'm going to teach you how to use my favorite image editing software. You can use this for creating custom textures and decals, logo design, graphic design of all sorts, as you can see on my channel all over the place, image post processing for your portfolio, and just about anything else that you're ever going to need as a 3D artist. And it's completely free. Let's talk about it. First of all, go to Google and type in PaintSpaceNet, not Paint.net, PaintSpaceNet. This is a free image editing program. This is what you always see me use in my videos. This is what my 3D career is built upon. This is only going to work with Windows. If you're a Mac OS or Linux user, you're fucked. Scroll down here, hit this download button, then click on this link up here. You're gonna get a zip file here, extract that anywhere on your computer, and then follow that installation setup until you're done. It ain't nuclear physics. I don't have to show you that in this tutorial. When you install the program, this is what you're going to see. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the tools and functions of this program. I'm going to show you how it works, and then in the next episode of this mini series, I'm going to teach you how to use this program for different purposes. Let me explain something to you before we talk about this topic. This program is free. This ain't Adobe Photoshop, I can't teach you paid programs. I don't want to teach you paid programs. Since the program is free, it has limited features. A lot of things are going to look very stupid if you're coming from Photoshop. If you're using Photoshop or Substance Painter, you're probably a criminal, but in that case, you don't need to watch this tutorial. So I don't want to see no comments complaining about how primitive and basic this program is. That's the whole fucking point. It's free, it's limited, it's ghetto, but it works. And if it looks stupid, but it works, it ain't stupid. Fuck you. Let's start talking about some of the very basic tools, which you you can find on this little toolbar. This is one of the four windows that you have on top of your canvas. You can toggle those windows with these button up here. So if you don't see four of them, maybe they're turned off up here. First, you got your basics brush tool. The shortcut for that is B. And now you can just click and drag to draw whatever you want. A simpler version of the brush tool is the pencil tool, which draws pixel by pixel. You're probably never going to need the pencil tool unless you're maybe trying to paint pixel by pixel, but I never use this personally. The brush tool has a bit of a thickness and you can control the brush size or the thickness of the brush in this little menu up here you can either do plus and minus to adjust the size or you can select the size in this menu over here and this is where you can find your bigger brushes if you're using the plus minus you can hold control and then it's going to jump by five units and you have a little bit more control you can change the hardness of your brush if the hardness is set to zero it's going to be very soft like this but if it's set to 100 it's going to be very sharp like this if you increase the spacing you're going to create dots instead of a line and the lower the spacing the closer the dots are going to be together when the spacing is low enough your dots are going to be so close together that they're going to start looking like a line. You can also change the filling of your brush up here. This is where you can get a bunch of textures. You can do dotted patterns and all kinds of shit. Personally, I never use this either. I just keep it on solid color. You got your eraser tool over here. It has the same settings as the brush tool. And when you erase something on the background layer, you're just going to see a transparent background. This image has an alpha channel. Transparency is extremely important. And we're going to talk more about that later. If you have multiple layers, your eraser is only going to erase one layer at a time. And it's going to reveal the layer below. We're going to talk more about layers later on as well. Then you got your bucket tool. This is pretty straightforward. Here we have a bunch of different colors. Let's say I want blue and I'm going to use my bucket to paint over something. By default, the bucket is going to have a little bit of tolerance for color variation. It's not only going to paint over exactly the color which we're clicking on. If you only want to paint over this exact color, set the tolerance to zero. This means it's not tolerating any differences whatsoever. So when you click on a color, only that color will be painted. If you set the tolerance to 100, it tolerates everything. Everything will be painted. This tolerance function is also relevant in your magic wand selection tool. It works exactly the same way. You can adjust how much tolerance you want the tool to have for variations in color. Then you got your gradient tool. This this will give you a nice gradient between two colors. You can change the colors over here in this window. First click on this color, you can set that to anything. The color controls are more or less the same as in any other program. You got your color wheel right here. You got your hue, saturation value, opacity, and you also have some pre-made colors. The gradient is going to use your primary and secondary color. So make sure you switch those to whatever you want before you create the gradient. You can also change the shape of the gradient up here. For example, you can make a dot like this. You can make a spiral or some other shit. When you're making spirals, you can toggle some things up here. If if you set this to repeat, it's going to give you this very trippy effect. If you got epilepsy, good luck. Your eyedropper tool allows you to pick an exact color. For example, I want this specific shade of red. I'll use my eyedropper, click on that, and then I can use that with my brush or with my bucket. If you left click on a color, it's going to become your primary color. If you right click, then it's going to become your secondary color. You got a box select tool, click and drag to select a box. Now you can delete this. You can paint only in this box with your bucket tool. This is very important because it gives you very good control over which exact areas you're painting painting over. You got your lasso select tool, which makes you do random shapes. You also have a circle select tool. Hold shift to make sure it's an exact circle and not an oval. 
you got a very simple text tool click anywhere and type in whatever you can change the font up here you can change the font size bold italic underlined you can change the text alignment this is as simple as it gets then you got your line tool once you draw a line you're going to get four control points which you can use to turn this into a curve you can use these little menus up here to control the shape of the line you can do the front and the back separately you can make it rounded you can turn it into an arrow you can make it flat you can do whatever you want you can turn the middle segment into dashes or dots you can still change the color after the line is already made one problem with paint net is that once you finish making something you can no longer select that element because it's completely destructive so in this case if i want to change the color of this thing i can't just select it and change a color i have to either use the bucket tool which is also going to make this thicker or i can select this shape go to effects go to adjustments hue saturation and change the hue change the saturation change the lightness whatever this can be a pain in the ass this is why layers are very important and every element that you add on top of another element you're better off adding it on a separate layer because if we use our brush tool and we create something over this shape once it's done we can't do anything else with it unless it's on a different layer to place it on a different layer go over here you use this plus to add a new layer you can move this over or under any other layer and you have to select which layer you want to paint on now i want to make a smiley over here and if i want to move this smiley i have to go to this layer use my box select tool select this control x to cut and then control v to paste it and now you can move this selection anywhere that you want you also have some settings for layers where you can change the opacity you can change the blend mode you got a bunch of different settings here that can give you some cool effects you can even rename your layers you also have have a shape creation tool by default it's set to square but you can change the shape to whatever else you have over here you can do arrows you can do lightning bolts there's a bunch of bullshit up here that nobody ever uses i only ever use rectangle rounded rectangle circle and that's more or less it now you can change whether you want it filled or whether you want an outline if you use outline the outline is going to be primary color the filling is going to be the secondary color you can also use this shit over here i think it's pretty clunky so i never use it I just found out now that there's this tool called recolor where you can pick another color and then it's only going to paint over the color which you clicked on initially. If I would have known this, my life would have been easier. I didn't know this. This just makes paint net 10 times better. You can undo whatever you want here. You can even jump to any step in your entire process. There's no limit to how much you can undo or redo. Those are all the basic tools that you have in these windows. Let me show you a few more tricks in these settings up here. In the image menu, you can flip your image. You can rotate it by 90 degrees or by 180 degrees. I never use this layers shit, but there's a bunch of options in here for changing the layers. For example, you can flip only one layer without flipping the entire image. Then in your adjustments, this is where you can control the colors. For example, I can select this entire image, go to adjustments, brightness, contrast. Now I can increase or decrease the brightness and the contrast. In the hue saturation, I can change the color. I can change the color intensity. I can change the lightness. I can invert colors. And you have a bunch of other cool effects here, such as posterize, which is not going to be visible in this simple example. But if you're using a more complex image such as this one over here all these effects become more usable you can turn an image into a trippy poster you can make it look like it's from world war one you got highlights and shadows which let you control the highlights and the shadows and the clarity and whatever this is what you're going to use if you're post processing a render or an image then you got effects for example blurs i usually go for gaussian blur this makes an image blurry obviously you can add noise this usually makes your images look a little bit more realistic if you're rendering them in blender and there's a few more cool effects that can come in handy in here such as sharpen soften and a few other things that you're rarely going to use this is why you gotta go exploring these menus if you want to learn how to use this program just pull out a picture and fuck around with the tools for five minutes you're gonna get the hang of it in no time remember that when you select something only that area is going to be affected by whatever adjustment you're making you can see an example of how only the selection is getting the saturation changed right now those are the very basic tools that you're going to need for PaintNet. In the next tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create your own textures, icons, decals, whatever. These tutorials are based on the texturing section of my ebook. This is about to come up in the new update. So go check that out. The link is below. You still got 20% off before it comes out. Like the damn video and I'll see you in the next one.